Hello, Osai Sink here. This is the new Korg Volker FM, an updated and upgraded version of the old Volker favourite. Korg actually sent this to me a little while ago, primarily to check whether my free online browser-based editor for the Volker FM, Synthmata, has still worked with this new version and it's just as well they did send it over because it didn't Uh, that's all fixed now Um, but I thought seeing as I had the new Volker FM in my possession I thought I would do a quick video uh, to discuss what has been changed and upgraded both on the Volker but also in my editor because I've made some upgrades there as well and sort of reintroduce people to the editor while we were here Um, I won't go into a huge amount of depth in terms of sound design and the like. I've covered the original Volker FM in a lot of detail on this channel, and none of those facets of the instrument have really changed. Uh, But as I say, Korg have improved um, and added features to this version, uh, which I will just quickly go over in this video. So probably the biggest thing that Korg have added uh, in terms of this being a synth that you can perform with is that we have moved from three note polyphony on the original up to six notes on the new Volker FM. Um, The three note polyphony was possibly not the hugest deal if you were sequencing, but if you were trying to play the Volker with a a keyboard, just use it as a sound module, three notes could often be a little bit restrictive so it's great to see that's been expanded um, from that perspective of um, actually playing it as a sound module from a keyboard um, on the original Volker FM the velocity was linked to the slider on the front panel which was just um, cc numbers which meant that the original Volker FM didn't respond to velocity if you played it with a keyboard and that was a bummer, <laughs> frankly. Uh, that is uh, no longer the case. So um, uh, first things first, if you plug a MIDI keyboard into the Volker FM, it will now respond to velocity. The velocity slider now um, runs from um, positive to negative, and it's an offset to the velocity. Um, when you play stuff into the uh, sequencer by default, it's at um, uh, velocity 63, 4, I think. Um, which is the middle velocity, and you can move that velocity up and down now rather than from zero uh, to full, uh, and this will offset the incoming velocity. Uh, The transpose slider works as it always did, and that was always a really useful performance tool, so I'm glad to see that that is still uh, as it was. So on the original Volker, we had our chorus, which was a good way of adding some um, stereo width. We now have also got a reverb, and you can have both on at once. So I'll just turn off the chorus for a second. That's the uh, dry sound turning on the reverb. So it's actually a really nice sounding reverb not too bright, not too clouded in the mids. And it, to my ears, seems to um, nicely complement actually the sort of harder digital sounds that you might end up with in FM. So that's a really nice um, improvement because I would often pair the original Volker FM with a reverb pedal because um, it sounded better if you did. Um, So having that reverb in here and a stereo reverb, no less, is actually a huge benefit. And as I say, you can have both on at once, chorus and reverb. Cool. So the next thing to mention is that the patch memory has been doubled. You used to have 32 slots, you now have 64. And in the first 32 out of the box, we've got a new set of 
factory patches, which I have to say... ...are pretty good. Um, certainly, I think, better than the original... Um, factory patches um the original factory patches are actually here as well if you um, miss them if you go up to um uh the past 32 you'll get to your uh, original factory patches if uh, you want to uh, revisit them um one uh, other small thing from a sound design perspective actually is that on the original Volker FM the sample and hold LFO didn't work properly and it just made glitchy noises um it now works as it should do. So if you're importing uh, DX7 patches with sample and hold LFOs in, they actually sound like they're meant to now. So just a couple of things um, left uh, related directly to MIDI, actually. Uh, so the first thing is, if you are uh, eagle-eyed, you will notice that the full-size five-pinned-in MIDI input is now gone. Um, so we are now working with the uh, mini jack MIDI connections, uh, but we have now got a MIDI in and out. So um, the MIDI out transmits uh, all of the knobs and sliders. Um, it transmits clock, obviously. It transmits note on messages, uh, which are affected by the velocity slider. It doesn't oddly transmit um, the arpeggiator which is a shame so um if you turn on the arpeggiator and play a chord you just send the chord so, yes, I say, which is a which is a shame that um that you can't send the arp there but perhaps that'll be changed in a upcoming firmware so just a, a note on these mini jack connections um if you have kit which uses these mini jack connections then great um but the adapter to go to a uh, full-sized uh, DIN connector doesn't come in the box. So you will need to get one of these or two of these uh, if you want to connect to gear which needs full-size connections. So Korg equipment uses type A converters. So make sure that you grab type A converters. If you have um, multiple devices which um, all use type A, uh, you can just connect them with um, a uh, mini jack. So, for example, the um, the SQ64, for example, the sequencer that Korg make, um, that has mini jack outputs. It's the same type. You can just use a um, mini jack TRS connection between them. But if you wanted to go between, for example, this and a uh, Beat Step Pro or Key Step, um, Artoria gear uses Type B converters. So that means you need to have the converter at the Arturia side and the converter at the Korg side, and then use a five pin DIN cable. Uh, the jury is still out from my perspective on the uh, DIN MIDI uh, spec. Um, it would be fine if everyone was all using the same um, converters, but sadly they're not, so it's a little bit of a faff. I think more and more people are moving towards type A as it happens, so um, it's more likely that gear will work with the Volker than not, but as I say, for example, the Arturia Step Series worked. So just one more thing um, related to MIDI before we take a look at the updates to the editor. As was the case on the original Volker FM, uh, the new Volker FM will uh, still load uh, DX7 patches. Um, a little known fact is that the original Volker FM, the way that it implemented its um, SysX patch data was actually non-standard compared to the Yamaha. Um, if you ever loaded a DX7 patch onto the original Volker FM and it didn't really sound like it did in, in Dext, for example, uh, that was usually because um, the wrong uh, operators were turned on and off. And that's because the original Volker FM added something to the patch data which allowed you to turn the operators on and off, which is really useful from my perspective when creating an editor. But it did mean that when you tended to load DX7 patches, the wrong operators were turned on and off and it didn't sound the way that it should. Um, that is now fixed. If you um, load a patch from a DX7, what the Falcon now does is it turns all of its operators on first. Um, so it still might not sound exactly as it did on the patch um, if that patch had operators turned off, but it's more likely to sound right than it did previously. Um, 
that was one of the things I've had to work around in order to update my editor as it happens. Um, yeah, um, so this is now more standard to the DX7 patch format um, and is more likely to sound right when you import those patches, which in most cases is going to be a good thing. Right, um, let's take a quick look at the editor as well. So this is Synthmata. You'll find the link to it in the description of this video. It is a completely free browser-based online editor for the Volgrafm and also for the DX7. So all you need to use Synthmata with your Volker is a browser and a USB MIDI interface. The browser will have to be uh, Chromium-based, um, so that's Chrome, Opera, uh, Edge, uh, Brave, uh, a number of other browsers as well. Um, it um, won't work with um, Safari, unfortunately. Apple haven't implemented Web MIDI. Uh, it can work with Mozilla, but you will need to install a Web MIDI plugin extension to uh, make that work. In terms of a USB MIDI interface, if you've got an audio interface, it's likely that you've got MIDI on that. But if you haven't, um, there are a number of options out there. There are some very inexpensive sort of unbranded ones that you can get uh, from Amazon, eBay. Your mileage may vary with those. I have one and it works fine, but the number one reason for people asking for support with this editor when it's not working is uh, one of these sort of unbranded USB MIDI interfaces. For some reason, they don't pass um, SysX data properly. The one that I usually recommend that I know works well, and a number of users have told me it works well, is the Roland UM1 Mark II. It's fairly inexpensive. It's a little bit more expensive than these super cheap ones, but not by much. That one works really well. Um, a couple of other ones I know don't work, um, the uh, Step Series from Artoria, the, those controllers are not true MIDI interfaces, so they don't work. Uh, actually, it goes for quite a lot of sort of controller keyboards uh, with USB connectivity. They don't um, necessarily pass patches properly, so that's just something to look out for. So um, in case you haven't seen it before, I'll just give you a quick guided tour of the interface. When you first arrive at the page, um, so if I just refresh this here, um, you may be prompted to allow the page to have access to your media devices. You're going to want to click allow there, obviously. If you click block, um, then there's a, a little icon in the, um, in the address bar, which you can uh, use to allow it again. Uh, down here in the setup, the first thing you want to do is make sure that your MIDI device has been selected if you have multiple MIDI devices, and also the MIDI channel on the Volkers, this should always be MIDI channel one on the, uh, if you're using it for the DX7, you set it to the MIDI channel that you're using. You can then choose which of the modes you're going to be using. So you've got the original Volker, the new one, and also Yamaha mode for uh, DX7 and also um, DX200. So in our case, we will select the new Volker FM mode. On the side here, we have a place to load and save SysX. This uses a single patch uh, format, not the cartridge patch format, which you find a lot of online, unfortunately. Um, so you, if you can't load SysX into Synthmata, it's probably because it's the cartridge format. A button to send the patch as it currently is in case it hasn't been sent automatically. A really important button, which is the init patch, which sends an initialized patch to the Volker, so you have a good starting point. And also this create shareable patch link. What this will do is generate a URL in this box here, which will contain all of the information to rebuild the patch. So if you want to share your patches uh, with someone, you can just send them a link. And, um, and that's a way of sharing the patches. So the um, first part of the interface here is the randomizer. I've moved this to the top because I think it's probably a really, really useful thing um, to have. What this um, interface does is it will automatically generate a patch based on the settings of the slider. So you can kind of decide what kind of patch you want to create. So if I want to have a sort of slightly atonal, fairly complex, bright-ish, uh, sound that's uh, not very hard, doesn't really have much hit to it, maybe has a bit of a twang to it, it's fairly long and paddy, has a little bit of wobble, which is your pitch modulation, and a little bit of wobble, which is more of your sort of um, amplitude modulation. And now if I click new patch and just lean over and play my uh, Volker, 
it's created a patch based on those sorts of suggestions. And if I press it again, it'll create a new one. This one's very long. Some lovely glossy overtones. Maybe we decide that we want things a bit more wobbly and a bit more wobbly and not as bright, but more complex, not as atonal. Um, and we can click new patch again. We'll get another one. It's a classic FM sound, isn't it? So this can be a really, really, oh, that's cool. This can be a really great way to create patches or find inspirations for new patches. Honestly, when I'm making uh, patches for jams these days, um, I basically just use the randomizer. I, I choose the kind of sound that I want to create. I click new patch until I hit upon something that I like, and then jobs are good and we have got a patch. Um, if you want to um, make things from scratch, perhaps we'll go to an init patch here. Uh, yes, please. Um, basically, uh, we have our operator on and off controls um, here. Um, I have got a workaround so that this still works with the new Volker FM, despite the fact that you can't actually turn them on and off properly at the moment. Um, so here we can turn our operators on and off, and then we have uh, basically the same interface for each of the six operators on the synth, which has control over our envelope. Remember that the uh, envelopes are talking about rates and not um, times, so you want to turn it um, up to make it move faster rather than down as you would on other uh, sort of ADSR type synths. So turn that down to make our release longer, uh, for example. And we have all the stuff with the operator scaling, the operator tuning, the operator levels and sensitivity. So setting whether they're going to be modulated, key modulated, et cetera, et cetera. Um, a new feature that I've added now is that we now have copy and paste between the operator. So if I want to take this operator and paste it into operator two, we can just click copy and then paste on operator two, which is very useful if you're creating um, sort of pseudo analog arrangements where you have multiple operators. Um, yeah, um, I added. I should have added this a long time ago, but we've added it now. And then down at the bottom, you have the global voice control. So um, choosing the algorithm, uh, the feedback, uh, that sort of thing. We've got our pitch envelope here and our LFO settings here. And then finally, the patch name. And this will be sent to the, um, the Volca as well. Just to make sure um, when you have created a patch that you like, that you do save it onto your uh, Volker if you want to actually have it stored on the Volker by hitting the save button, choosing a uh, position to save it in, and then hitting the save button a second time. But of course, if you don't want to save it to your Volker and you want to use it again, you can always um, save it um, by saving the SysX. Or honestly, the way I would suggest doing it is to just use the uh, shareable patch link instead. So as I mentioned, this is entirely free. Um, there's no ads or anything on here, no JavaScript nasties, uh, just the stuff that's required to, do, to create the functionality. Um, so please use it with my blessing. Um, if you want to use it in an offline environment, you can head to my GitHub page, which I'll also link to in the description, and you can download the entire site. It will work fine offline, except a couple of the fonts might look different, but the functionality will all be there. Um, so uh, if you have a, a studio computer that's not connected to the internet, uh, you can use it there. It also works um, on Android uh, devices as well, but not on um, iOS devices, unfortunately, because of the web MIDI issue. While I'm mentioning the GitHub page, if you uh, want to contribute to the, um, the project, if there's something, uh, a feature that you'd like to see and you're a coder, then um, I'm always happy to chat, um, either leaving an issue or, or just issuing a, a pull request. Um, that's absolutely fine. Also on the repository, there is my library, which I think I mentioned in the instructions actually, uh, called CSynthMata, which is a library which you can uh, build your own MIDI uh, editors using just HTML and, uh, and CSS if you want to style it and um, it sort of hooks up all of the MIDI stuff for you and makes that already straightforward. That's what I use to build my Volker drum editor, for example. Anyway, I hope that was uh, useful and interesting and uh, I hope you get uh, good use out of Synthmata. 
if you did enjoy the video and if you do like synth router then um please feel free to leave a like on the video make sure to subscribe to the channel for more synth fun coming up always but um other than that and until next time take care